any of those people in this cycle and this new see this this new cycle we're in is going to end a season so there's about to be a new season but the new season is not here yet but a new cycle is here and it began last night so uh, and this is uh, sister Leslie reminded me uh, a moment ago that in this month in the Hebrew it's a month where they blew the shofar every day every day for the for the month the shofar was blown which really and truly is a prophetic gesture if you will it's prophetic see when the when the scripture talks about the shofar blowing and the and, and there's a couple of places where it talks about someone putting their lips or their mouth to the trumpet or the shofar. So what that is telling us is what that's saying to me right now, if this is the month in the Hebrew calendar, God's calendar, when the shofars are blown every day, that that's a prophetic sign that we need to be prophesying every day. You know, we're all called to prophesy, whether you know it or not, you're called to prophesy the word of the Lord. God's word we should be speaking. In this decade we're in, we're in a decade of the mouth. Yes. And the mouth is to speak God's word. In any situation or circumstance, what we've got to be doing in this time that we're in is speaking God's word with authority and power. Yeah. Do you understand we were talking about last week about the kingdom of God? Matter of fact, I want to go back there and then go from there. But, but I want to talk to you just a moment about uh, a law, the, the month that we just entered into on the Hebrew calendar. It, it, it's, uh, it's, it's called the narrowest month, but it's also... Um, the sixth month of the biblical year. Uh, it's it's actually the sixth month of the spiritual and the what is it the eleventh month yep. the eleventh month of the civil year because next month is is a new year so so anyway we're in this time and this time uh, this. This month that we are entering into now in the Hebrew text or in the Hebrew, it actually means the king is in the field. Now that is a, that's prophetic. It, the king is in the field. In other words, let's talk about that. We're talking about the meaning of the meaning of this month that the king is in the field. Now think about this. In, in the, that culture, the king was in a palace, was he not? Yeah. Well, the king lived in a palace, but there was a month of battle every year. The king would leave his palace and leave all this elegant things and come out into the fields with the people, his people, his loyal subjects. He would he would come out into the field and set up his tent out there and and mingle and talk and get and have conversations with his people, his loyal subjects. So we can they called it the king is in the field. So he's in your field right now. I want to declare to you yes. that the king has left his throne and he's in the field with you right now. Amen. So he's also there to help you set some boundaries in your life. Now that doesn't mean decrease boundaries. There may be some things we need to decrease in, but it actually means to enlarge your code or expand your boundaries. And he's with you to defeat your enemy in those situations. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yeah. 
in, in historically in the Jewish tradition there was that one month a year when the king leaves his palace goes into the working fields now what is that prophetic of? that's prophetic of Yahshua King Jesus leaving his heavenly home and coming here to save us Glory to God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad he came? Yes. Aren't you glad he came to save us? Thank you. <laughs> it's just a type and shadow of what Jesus did. Thank you, Lord. In this, uh, see, this shofar being blown every day is releasing a sound. Amen. Releasing a sound from God. Now, when we talk about the shofar being blown every day, when you blow the shofar, you have to put your mouth to it. You have to breathe into that. So when putting, putting the putting of the mouth to the trumpet or the shofar and the breath going into that instrument is a prophetic picture of God speaking to us and breathing life-filled, spirit-filled words that we are to release out into the world. Does Amen. that make any sense? Amen. Please? You know, we've got to we've got to hear God. We just been uh, recently Pam shared this thing about the breath, God's name being breath or breathing sign. So when He breathes into us his word, then we are to release that out with that sound that's going to change things. I don't know about you, but there's some things need changing yes. Amen. around me and so around you and around this area and around our nation. Yes. There's some things that need to be changed and the word of God will change that. Yes. So it's up to us or when he breathes on us, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Spirit. Well, he breathed on them and breathed the breath of life. God, in the garden, God breathed on man and man became in his image and in his likeness. So now we see that through the ages, God wants to redeem us back to our original state with God, but even greater than Adam had it before Adam fell. Am I making any sense? Amen. So, uh, you know, the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory. And glory has the only begotten of, from the Father, full of grace and truth. He came to earth because of his great love the world it, that's so amazing yes. to me it's so it so confounds me to think that we have a father in heaven that sent his son to die to redeem us back to himself that is such an amazing thing yes. that love is so, so, something I'm capable of love, but I'm not capable of that kind of love. Amen. <clears throat> it, but it's so amazing to me that we have a father that loved us so much that he would give his only son. But in this time, the king is in the field, and if you if you uh, if you notice in Mark chapter four when Jesus talked about the seed and the sower he talked about uh, where the seed was sown by the wayside on stony ground you know and all that but he talked about seed that was sown in good ground and the good ground was the hearts yes. of the believer well that heart is the greatest field you ever <clears throat> have or you can have and the king is in the field he's in your heart He's in your heart. We talked about that last week, so I want to go. I just wanted to say a couple things about that. And by the way, uh, 
tail of the mosque is the same. Is that right? Um, I was going to ask you if you wanted to change it. This Wednesday is the 31st of August. So we've always had it the first Wednesday of the month, which would be another week okay. for September. I meant to ask you because this is just a little bit off. It's Wednesday not as close. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. So well, we did. You want to change it to this Wednesday? I mean, there's not that many that come that we can't get that word out. It, have you already sent it out? Well, the Well, the, ca the calendar goes out each. Yeah, well, let's just leave it. Okay, so it's in two weeks. A week of this coming. Correct. All right. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, can I go back to a couple scriptures we went over last week? I want to go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1, verse 12 and 13. Thank you, Lord. You got it? Yep. Verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet or fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Thank you, Lord. Now, the Amplified, uh, the King James says the saints in light, but the Amplified says the saints in the light. It's actually, the translation was actually, actually giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us fit or able or enabled us to be partakers of in the inheritance of the saints in the life. Amen. Who is the life? Joshua is the life. Yes. Matter of fact, we saw, you can go back to Genesis 1 1. God saw the life and it was good. That was Joshua. Amen. <laughs> when we see, and we will look at some other things here as we go. But <clears throat> in verse 13, he says, Who hath delivered us? From the power of darkness. Thank you, Jesus. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He's made us in, or he has enabled us, or he's made you able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. He has delivered us from the powers of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now Luke, Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. Let's go there for a second. That we were there last week and we'll get these and then move <laughs> forward. Luke 17. Jesus was here and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come he answered them and said the kingdom of God cometh not with observation verse 21 neither say they or neither they say lo here or lo there or it's over here it's over there for behold the kingdom of God is within you so the kingdom of God, now the Amplified, let me read the Amplified there that says the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts, and among you, and surrounding you. Amen. Glory to God. Whether we know it or not, you've got it in you, you've got it on you, you've got it around you. Yes. You are a citizen of heaven. We talked about that last week. You're a citizen of heaven, and the kingdom is within you. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want to look at, let's get a few scriptures here. Again. So the kingdom of God is within us. God has made us, able, enabled us to be partakers of his kingdom 
in the light, which is the Son of God. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to St. John chapter 3. St. John chapter 3. And we're going to read some familiar scripture. We're going to read a few verses. 1 through 7, I think. You ready? There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these things that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, the translation of that word that was translated again is actually, the, actually a phrase that says from above. So he says, except a man be born from above, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within you. Now, let me keep reading. Just keep, keep, keep that in mind. Except a man be born again or born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again, or born from above. Or born from above. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Jesus just said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Then he said, except you be born of water and of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom. Well, the kingdom is within us, the Bible says. The, key, the kingdom is within us. He's enabled us to be partakers of that kingdom. Is that true? Is that what yeah. we just read? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Now let's look at uh, Matthew 6. Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm going to read that in the Amplified. We've read this many times here. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. Then all these things taken together will be given you besides. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these <coughs> things shall be added unto you. But seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness. What is his kingdom? It tells us here in Amplified, his way of doing and being right. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing things and his way of being right. God says, seek that first and 
and then other things will be added to you. Right. See, we've got to go about, see, I've learned over the years that in business and in anything, actually, if I seek God's way, if I seek how he would do that, just simply put it, here's the way I look at things. I say, how would God do this? If I've got a business decision to make, if I've got a decision of anything to make, if it has to do with uh, my life in general, if it has to do with my horses, if it has to do with my work, if it has to do with anything in my life, how would God do that? How would God do what I'm about to have to do? How would he, how would he choose to work through this situation? Or how would he choose, if it's a negative situation, how would he make it positive? And he can do that. Amen. He does do that. Amen. He's the God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, so... We know that we're citizens of the kingdom, right? We know that the kingdom is within us, right? We know that he's enabled us to be partakers of that kingdom. We know that he said to enter it, to see that kingdom, you must be born again. To enter into that kingdom, you must be born of, of To enter into that kingdom... You've got to be born a natural man or woman first, and then you've got to be born again, or born from above, as Jesus said. And be and we just call it being saved. Yeah. Yeah. How many in here saved? Yes. How many is born of this kingdom? Yes. Of this born from above. The holy city, the new Jerusalem in heaven. Heaven. See, you were born out of heaven when you were born again. That's the reason that we're citizens of heaven. We have our citizenship in heaven. Now, here's what I want to move into. If we're in a kingdom, we have a king, of course. His name is Yahshua. So we have a king that rules over this kingdom that's within me that I've been enabled to function and operate in. And we have a king that's over us. Now, when if we went all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, God said in about verse 26, let us make man or make a a species of being that's in our image and our likeness. It's in our image. He said, let us, or he said, let man be in our image and our likeness. Then he said, let them have dominion. Over what? Over all the earth. Did he not? He did not say, let them have dominion. Let, let us make them in our image, Father, Son, and Spirit. Let us make them in our image. And then we give them that's in our image authority and dominion over everything that you see. Over everything in the earth. Did he not say that? Yes. Amen. Now, see, we've got a king, but now we're, but he said, the king said, for us to have dominion. Did he not? Mm -hmm. The king said, the ones that the kingdom is within, let them have dominion. So, he put, when he put Adam in the garden, he put Adam as king over his creation, the earth, right? Then he said, we have this kingdom within us, but you're the king over my creation. That's 
what he told Adam. Right? So we have a king, then we are king. Uh, Revelation, Revelation 1, verse 5 and 6. Revelation 1, verse 5 and 6. And Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince, what's this? And the prince of the kings of the earth. Everybody got that? The faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead and the prince or the ruler of of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. He hath made us, watch this, he hath made us kings and priests unto God his Father to him be glory and dominion forever and and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He's, now, he's put a kingdom within us. He's made us able to be partakers of that kingdom in the light. And he tells us to seek that kingdom first. And then he's made us kings of that kingdom. So what is God saying to you this morning? He's saying that you're kings and priests over all my creation because mm -hmm. I gave it to Adam. I gave it to Adam originally, right? Yes. <coughs> Adam lost it. You know the story. Adam lost it. Jesus took it back. The Son of God came and took it back for us. And then he gave us that authority again. Now so... So, he's made us kings and priests. What, 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 what does that mean that he's made us kings and priests? See, before, before Jesus came and before he paid the price for us, there was kings and there were priests. Uh, now, think about this. The kings, what, what's this? The kings, or the priests, rather. The, the priests receive the visions of what God want done, wants done. And, but the kings provide the provision. The kings provide the provision. The priests get the vision. And now he's made you kings and priests. Priests also, one of the things that the priest does, one of the things that the priest does is they, you come to the priest and then the priest goes to God on your behalf. And then another thing he did was he brought what God said to mankind. So you had to have a priest to to get to God. You had to have a priest to get forgiveness. You had to have a priest to, uh, you had to have the priest to confess your sins. You had to have a priest take that confession to God. You had to have a priest bring God's forgiveness back to you. So the priest was your go-between between you and God, right? Yes. But now I'm going to tell you, you don't need that priest Amen. anymore. Amen. Jesus Christ made the way and he put that kingdom in you and he made you a priest unto God through Jesus Christ and now you go to God on your behalf and on others' behalf. Amen. Amen. You don't have to have somebody else do it for you. Thank you Jesus. The kingdom is within you. Yes. The king lives in you. Yes. The high priest lives in you. Yes. So you, the high priest lives inside every born again believer. And the king of kings lives inside every born again believer. So he says that I've made you kings and priests. Now you have the ability to see the vision and you have the ability to provide the provision. Thank 
всего. Revelation 19. Let's look at Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Verse 16, if you will. You know, this is when John seeing the Lord come back on the white horse with his army. Verse 16 says he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's made you kings and priests. Now he says he's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And you're the kings that he's king of. Yeah. Yes. And you've been made able or fit to be partakers of the kingdom of God. Yes. Through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's look at Revelation 22. That's the last... That's the last chapter of the Bible. Revelation 22. <clears throat> look at the first chapter of the Bible. Now I want to show you something here. If you look at the first chapter of the Bible, God said, let us make man, or let us make a new species of being in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion. Dominion is a king's domain. Is that right? Yeah. So he said, let them have dominion. In other words, he told Adam, I made you king over all this earth that I've created. I created it for you, actually. He said in another place, I created the earth so that you can mm -hmm. inhabit it. I've made you ruler and king over all this earth, over all the earth. Dominion and authority over all the earth. That's what he said, dude. And so I've created this new species of being that I, then I've made him king and lord over all my creation. Okay, then we know what happened, right? Lucifer first became Satan. And Satan deceived Eve and Adam. And then they lost their dominion. So actually they lost their kingdom. Is that right? Yes. They lost their kingdom. Then the prince of the power of the air comes in and takes over. Right? Right. Now that was... In the beginning, God. <laughs> In the beginning, God made man and put him in authority or king over his creation. Watch. Now, then when Jesus comes, Yahshua comes, he, he comes as Savior, and he was the propitiation of our sin. That means the atonement of our sins in 1 John in the back. 1 John 4, I believe. So now then Jesus comes back and defeats the devil and receives his kingship back, his sonship and his kingship back. And then he comes in the upper room after he's risen from the dead and breathes on his followers. He breathes on them. He breathed, God breathed in the garden and man became a living, speaking spirit just like God. If anybody listening to him. That, that's the original. When Man 
became, it says, man became a living mm -hmm. soul. Actually, he, he became a living, speaking spirit just like God. He had to be just like God. <laughs> because God made him in his likeness and in his image. He had to look like him and act like him. He got to choose the words he speaks. He got to choose what he wants to do. So he made him a speaking spirit just like himself. And now then when, so he released his spirit into that man. Now, so now when Jesus comes in the upper room, after he's risen from the dead, he comes in the room and he speaks peace to them because they're scared to death. Because they think God's mad at them. Because they think Yahshua's mad at them, angry with them. And they and they're afraid. And he walks in the room, you know, he's you know, with the door closed, but you know, I love that. I never get every time I think about that, I, something happens in here. It, because one day I'm gonna do that. Amen. <laughs> one day I'm gonna do that. I love that prophecy that said when we walk the streets of the planets of the stars, the flesh and blood of that day will look at us and say, we are blessed, but they indeed are blessed because they came out of the glory realm. Thank you, glory Jesus. Glory to you, God. Glory to God. When we walk the streets of the planets of the stars, see, that door couldn't stop Jesus. <laughs> That locked door couldn't stop Jesus. The cosmos can stop Jesus. And it's not going to be able to stop you either. Amen. So he, he walks in that room with the door closed. He walks in and says, peace be unto you. They hunker down. Think he's just going to lay on. First thing he says is peace be unto you. That's the nature of our God. No matter if we denied him, Peter was in that room. He had denied him. Thomas was in that room. He didn't believe him. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Peter was in that room. He had cussed and denied him. Mm -hmm. Not just once. Three times. And Jesus, Yahshua, he could have broke the door down if he wanted to. He just slipped right through it. Says, Peace be unto you. Yeah. you. Can you imagine? Thomas is right there. He done said, I won't believe this yeah. until I see the holes in his hands and the print in his side, the, the wound in his side. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to believe it. So he was a, at that point, he was an unbeliever. <laughs> he didn't believe God. That's right. Peter denied him. He walks in with those two right in there and says, peace be unto you. In other words, I love you. I'm not angry with you. Do you know God's not angry with you? Amen. Amen. Did you know you can't make God angry at right. you? Because he's looking at you through your son's blood. Yes, amen. And he's washed <coughs> your sins away through that blood. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. So he walks in that room. And he said, I only do what I see my father do. And I only say what I hear my father say. He walks in that room and says, Peace be unto you. And then he, the Bible says that he breathed on them. He breathed on them and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit or receive the Spirit of God. And now, what Satan robbed mankind of in the garden. Jesus in the upper room, if you will, restored it back. Yeah. He lost it in the garden, 
and he got it back in the upper room of Tom Collins. Yeah. And he said he breathed on it. Can you imagine? See, he'd been waiting approximately 4,000 years to release this new kind of life to man. To release. See, now, no longer we exhale so that we can inhale him. And now no longer can the enemy say that he's over the world. We're over the world. Yeah. He's still trying to claim his right to that through Adam's uh, sin. But Jesus come back and poured his blood out and covered that yeah, sin. Yeah. And he says, now I saw my father create a species of being like him. And now I'm going to release my breath and cause a species of being like me to come into existence. And we're going to change this thing forever. And Satan no longer has the power of death, hell, and the grave over you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Revelation 22, what? <coughs> back up to 21 chapter 21 and, and John is writing here by the Holy Spirit and he's showing us what he sits, what God has shown him and the vision that God has shown him about heaven about the, the holy city in heaven descending out of the holy city descending out of heaven from God and now, and let's see, and, uh, he, he describes what he saw. Basically, he describes the holy city that's in heaven coming down out of heaven to be set up here on earth. Thank you, Lord. Did everybody get that? Now, he said he, he saw, saw the holy city, or rather heaven, coming down prepared as a bride for a groom. Yes. Now, and he describes what he's seeing, and now in verse 22 of chapter 21, he says, I saw no temple there in, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. <laughs> and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So every time now you read the light in Scripture, who's it talking about? Amen. Jesus. The Lamb of God. Yes. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it yeah. you've been made kings and priests unto God is that right? Amen. yes amen and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day for there shall be no night there. When this kingdom is comes back and is set up here there's, there's, there's going to be no darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No darkness because the Lord is the light. Amen. The Amen. Lamb of God is the light. Amen. There'll be no night there. For the gate shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. In other words, it's going to be day all the time. Amen. Because he's the day star. Right. Amen. 
Remember in the garden or in Genesis 1 1? He's going to be, he's the light. And God saw the light and it was good. And that the light it's talking about right here. Well, where are we? Verse 26. 26. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Now, now when you look up this uh, verse 26 and research and inquire into it, the word honor there means value, money paid. It means money paid. It means valuables. It means precious. It means price and sum. That's the meaning of that word. They shall bring the glory and the value and the money and the valuables and the precious and the price and the sum of all nations into this kingdom, into this temple. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything defiled, neither whatsoever work of abomination or make it a lie, but that which is written in the Lamb's book of life. Glory to God. And then he says, then he says in verse chapter 22, and he, Yahshua, showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, Proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, or the flow of it, in the midst of the Broadway or flow of the city or the river flowing out of the city, out of the, out of the throne of God. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river. You hear what he's saying? Mm -hmm. In the midst of the street of it, if you don't have your Bible, look at the screen up here. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river. So what? What is he saying? Watch what he's saying. In the middle of the river. And on either side of the river. So that is in three places, right? Amen, amen. It's in three places. In the midst and on either side. So this side of the river, in the middle of the river, and on the other side of the river. Now that river is the river of life. And that's the river that you cross when you leave this world and go into the other world, into God's world, into the kingdom of God. So what, 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 what he's saying? We've got, we have such a merciful God. We have such a merciful and gracious God and loving God. See, when, when it gets to the place in your life when you're crossing over from this life to eternal life, he says, now, let's go back and finish this. In the midst of the street of it, or the flow of the river, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life. Now let's think about that a moment. The tree of life, the Bible says, is in the middle of the river, the midst of the river, and it's on either side of the river. The tree in three places. <laughs> As we're crossing over, see God is so merciful that he's put the tree of life in our path as we cross from this life until life everlasting or wherever we're going. And he's put it there. You can receive the tree of life on this side, which is the best. 
You receive it while you're crossing over from this life to the other life. And just at the last point of where you're about to leave your body completely and go into the spirit realm, he says, I'm going to give you one more chance. He's such a merciful God. Yes. So any, any of your relatives has been belligerent and hard hearted know that they don't have to get to that riverbank one day. Mm. And there's going to be a crossing over before you get to the gates of the gates. And if you don't get him on this side, if you don't receive him on this side, and if you don't receive him while you're in that process, he's going to give you one last chance because he's so merciful. The truth of life on this side and the next and on the other side. I mean, a lot of us get a picture of I'm climbing up the bank, Lord, <laughs> on the other side. I didn't believe in you before, but now, now I see you. How can you not believe? Mm -hmm. I know some. midst of the street of it and on either side of the river there was the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations and there shall be no more curse but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it and his servant shall serve him. Thank you, Lord. And they shall see his face. Hallelujah. Amen. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, or in the forefront of their mind. In other words, you won't be able to get him off of your mind. <laughs> He's going to be so beautiful and so full of love mm -hmm. and so powerful that you will never be able to get him off your mind. Mm -hmm. You're going to be focused on him. Uh, you won't worry about getting up and going to work in the morning. <laughs> You'll have things to do. <laughs> like Brother Hammond said, you're not going to be some hallelujah hobo sitting on a cloud playing a harp. <laughs> you're going to be uh, doing things that God's doing. Yes. Thank Amen. you, Lord. And there, verse 5, here's where I want to get to, verse 5. And there shall be no night there and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall do what? Rain. How long? Ever. Forever and ever. He started off putting Adam in the garden and putting him over, over the earth. Now, he's going to have his way. If you, we don't get our dominion and authority that we should have here, we're going to get it there. Yes. But I'm believing for practicing now. Yes. Amen. I'm practicing now. I'm practicing for dominion and authority. I'm practicing. See, if I've got dominion and authority over the earth, since I'm in an earth suit, my body's made out of the earth, Amen. this is the best place for me to start practicing my dominion and authority. Wow. Yes. Yes. Come on.
on somebody. Yeah. Wow. It's the best place. See, I, this way I kind of look at it. If I can't have dominion and authority over this piece of real estate, yeah. how am I going to rule and reign over everything else? How, how am I going to have dominion and authority over Meridianville and Hazel Green? Amen. If, if I can't have dominion and authority over this 165, 765, or 765 of earth, you with me? Yes. Let's, let's start at home. Amen. Let's start practicing. Let's start practicing our dominion and authority. You practice so you can get good at something. So you can be an expert. Yes. <laughs> That's what God's looking for. Kings and priests yes. that knows how to get the provision because they've got the vision. Yes. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. The king has come to your field. Amen. The king's in your field. Yes. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to commune with you. He wants to put his lips to the shofar or the prophet, which is you. Let's start exercising our dominion and authority through his word. As he breathes upon his king and his priest. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. You give him that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Kings and priests unto God. Hallelujah.